hi guys and welcome back to my youtube channel i still remain your boy david and um i just before i go on with anything i have to say today i want to say a big thank you a big big thank you to all of those of you who have subscribed to the channel who are pushing the like button who are leaving comments um below it has helped a lot i've seen that a lot of people has also viewed my videos like you know i'm so thankful it's a it's a new channel obviously and uh, i need all the support that i can get in order to be able to you know reach out to a, a lot of people as well so right now we have i started with zero subscribers and now we're like five subscribers already i want to say a very big thank you it means a lot to me it means a lot to me and i'm so 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 grateful in fact y'all don't know how grateful i am but I want to use my first one minute and almost 20 seconds to say a very big thank you to all of you. Please do not relent. Just share the video. Click on the like button. Share with those people, you, those of your friends who are going through similar um, phase um, of the immigration process as well. I will appreciate that. And God bless you all. Okay, so let's get straight into what we have today. Today I'll be sharing um possible interview question but i don't want to go by the video on um youtube that people have so many um um questions um interview questions for cr1 and ir1 category and things like that i don't want to go into all of that i just want to pick from the questions how i was asked and some of the ones i was able to listen to before it got to my turn so please um um, so this video will help you a lot to know what's going on now. Some of those videos you, you see online are for people who have done this like two years ago, last one year ago. Obviously, there are some little tweaks, little difference in the way the process goes now. So it's not like before. So I think the update is always really, really important. So I'll go through the questions. I wrote um, all the ones I could remember down so that I will not forget and some of the ones um, I also listen to from other people's and you know, I just try to keep my ear sharp and then I hear one or two things, but I couldn't store a lot in my mind because you know, like it's not your turn yet. And you're just thinking, God, when you hear somebody having challenge or having issues, it's not like, it's not like a, a closed place where nobody can hear your story. Like everything you're saying, everybody can hear you. You know what I'm saying? Like then they just, they're just like behind you. You get what I'm saying? So it's not like you have to go into a room, lock the door, then you do. Nobody knows if you got it or not. Everybody knows what's going on. So when you're having, when you hit like the, like rock, when you hit rock, the rock, let me put it that way. You know, everybody can see how you panic. Everybody can see how, how uneasy you are. And if you find it very, very easy, everybody can also tell because she also be so smooth and, you know, easy. So I just want to wish every one of you who are still waiting or, who have gotten your IL because right now I think they are they're they are issuing IL up to June. So if you were documentarily qualified June 2022, you are lucky. So if you haven't received yours yet and you were documentarily qualified in June, just be patient. That means the next batch of um, um interview letters is gonna be you. So um some of my people who have some of the people who have um, texted me were like oh i got mine oh, congratulations to all of you i wish y'all success um yeah i've shared um a lot on my previous videos the documents you need to go with um my experience i've shared a lot of things with you like that so today i'll be dealing just with the questions so i will go through the questions i was quizzed first and i just add the little ones i can remember from other people's um question as well so let's get into wait yes so when you get to the uscis and you've gone through all the processes you need to go through they find taking all the things you need to take from you verify it and come back to you then you have to sit down and wait for your number to be called so when your number is called there are certain things you need to do so here are some of the questions i was quizzed once i was called so I was applicant number 20 on that day. So when I heard applicant number 20 come to window 19, I think, something like that, I just went straight. It was a white guy. So I went straight to that window. 
and he was looking at me. The first question he asked me was, who is your petitioner? Who is your petitioner? And your petitioner is the person who helped you, you know, it could be your husband or your spouse, um, your, husband, your husband or your wife, the one who helped you, you know, um, do the process. So that's your petitioner. So you can just answer that by saying, my wife is my petitioner. Some people say, I don't say my wife, say the name. They don't really care. They know the name already. Like everything you want to say, they have it in their system. Not all, but the major, major thing that they need from you. Yeah. So the next thing they asked me, the number two was, when did she first visit? When I answered that question, they asked me the specific date. Give us the specific, give me the specific date. What date, what year was it? <laughs> I was like, hmm, I thought a little bit. I just said it as I said, okay. So he also asked, number three was, how many times has she visited? I answered, hmm, he just nodded his head. And it was like, number four, he said, what was the date she first visited? Okay, I've done that already. So the next one was, how did you meet your spouse? How did you meet? And that's where the big problem is. This question is as easy as it could be. I've said in my previous video, please be very, very careful when you're answering this question. Make sure you have planned. Make sure you have put everything where it ought to be. Your answers with this question is very simple. But if you don't answer it properly, you are going to put yourself into a lot of stress. This is one of the questions that brings stress. All those other ones I mentioned before, they are just easy passes. You see this one? How did you meet your spouse? They are listening to you. They don't know the answer. They don't, they don't know the answer to this, you know. But if you over talk, then they will pick a question from the answer that you gave and, you know, ask you more questions on it. So you have to be very, very careful when you're answering this question. So number five was, what was the last argument you had with, with your spouse? And uh, that, one, that one hit me like a, like, like, like a blow, like... <laughs> I started thinking, argument, argument, argument. I'm like, um, I can't really remember. We argued about, we, I don't know. Like, I don't think we argued. I was like, so I'm just there. Like, I don't think we argued about something really, really bad. Like, the we had a little disagreement, which is normal. But I can't really say argue. But, okay. I just found something, Sha, and I just put it there. I can't remember what I said because it just came like, on our ways, you understand. So when I said that, then he asked me the next question. He said, "So, um, are you saying that you have a perfect relationship? You you don't think they were gonna ask you that, right?" I said, "Um, I wouldn't say perfect, 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 but I think we are um work in progress and we're doing fine because every home must always have um its ups and downs, but the good thing is we are able to resolve." um whatever challenge we are going through together so he looked at me like okay then he asked me the next question what do you what do you do together when she's around i'm like we sing together we cook together we um go visit places together like the uh, like a park you know i take her to and like yeah, yeah yeah wait so what do you cook together i said food he said no i need the name and I started giving, you know, some names of food that we cook together. He's like, okay. Then he asked me the next question. What does she do for a living? Then I answered that quickly, you know. Every, you should know what your, your partner does for a living. I mean, that's not a question of thinking like, but you no, know, it's so easy. You can easily say that. So if you don't know what your partner does for a living, you better ask questions. So ask important question from your partner. And he asked me, is she an immigrant? I'm like, no, she's a citizen of the state. Like, oh, okay. Then that leads to the next question. Nice. He said, where does she live? Like the address. And then he was looking at me. Typing, he started typing something on the system. And I told him, like, um, I gave him the address of the place in the States, obviously. So he was like, okay. So is that where you'll be living when you visit the States? I'm like, yeah, sure. Then he was still typing and typing and typing. And then he looked at me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to issue you a visa. Um also give you a paper that contains the information on how to collect your visa when it is ready 
um then he said some other things i couldn't really listen to i didn't really hear and i was like sorry is that all he's like yeah have a nice day i'm like thank you sir he said, thank you oh then i just then he okay he also said i will keep your passport so when we're done what are you going to collect it from the blah 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 I the rest things like I like I've been saying in my previous video whatever whatever else he was saying I wasn't listening so please some of you please don't be too excited like me try and listen so that you don't make mistakes you know for me I didn't listen all I just took my distance and you know ran out of the, I was so excited my legs were shaking I don't know what I, I just knew that I was so happy I was happy that everybody I met with that guy uh, bro tip us. I was just tipping them. You know, I went with um some little chain. I was just tipping them, bro. I didn't care. I was not, I didn't, I didn't even care what was going to I was just so happy. So some of you might want to be like me. So this video will help you a lot. So there's nothing to be scared of. And don't be overconfident and don't think that they're stupid and try to lie. Because when you lie and they end up picking a question for me to ask you the next question. You might end up falling your own hands and when you don't feel convinced they will push your case into administrative processing and i'm sure you don't want that to be your case so that's the reason i'm saying whatever you're doing please be careful please always always remember to pray before you go for the interview don't feel too confident listen to yourself don't don't listen too hard to other people's and problems it might not be yours all this time i'm saying that they didn't ask from people all of that they asked them something really really different the only thing he asked me to submit was my um um pictures wedding pictures that's the only thing he, he took from me all the charts that i printed birthday um history of trans and uh, money transaction they didn't ask for all of that guess what other people who went before me they were quiz charts they brought out history big i was like god i didn't print so much i printed about let's say 20 to 30 copies no, let's say 20 to 30 copies some people printed like 100 and something. So I was like, God, please, the mouse is so small. I was just looking at myself, you know. But all of that doesn't necessarily, but you have to go with everything that you think you need to convince them. There's no telling what they will ask from you. Of course, pictures will always be asked. Pictures will always be asked, but there's no telling. So don't be like, let me leave this one out. Go with everything. When you are done, if you cannot carry it alone, find Uber. Hmm? You come and rest, do the remaining rest. You know what I'm saying? So that's the tip I'll give you. And for some other people, I was able to listen to some of their questions. I would add some of their questions are part of the things I already mentioned that was part of mine. But I'll just go through some of the other things. Like, why was your spouse divorced? So if you married somebody who was divorced, you should know why. And they will want to see like the paper, the, the, that, the same thing you submitted on NVC. Because if your spouse is divorced, there's a place, it's something you need to submit there. I've forgotten the name now so just make sure that you go with all the original copies of everything you submitted that's what they call the civil document so go original with, or with the original so you tell them that when you're telling them the reason and how you met and everything make sure everything is connecting properly i'm telling you the truth and then they'll be listening really really hard and then if you're and they'll ask how many kids does he or she have that's the question i, I also had and how have you met his or her kids before then you have to answer that if you have or you haven't so you answer that and then um they said when, when was the last time he or she visited if it's over a year they'll ask you but why why hasn't he come around for over a year like they want to be sure that it's genuine relationship like it's not that you are just trying to you know what i'm saying because a lot of fraud stars are out there people just do the paperwork and just want to get out of the country you know what i'm saying so they know that nigerians are really really smart but unfortunately the ones that are doing the genuine the genuine things are also part of the victim so you have to be very very careful and prepared and prayerful so the next question that i also, also heard was um have you been married before if you've been married before answer the question and why did your own relationship end that you have to marry someone else so you have to give that that are, those are delicate questions don't let me lie to you they're delicate questions so when you are preparing prepare good answers prepare it well Prepare it like you want to tell some, you know, sometimes you might, maybe the person did you wrong and then you just want to leave. Say, I, I, because he lied to me, so I left the way. They're going to feel like that. You get what I'm saying? They want to be sure that the reasons are be like huge enough for you to want to leave. You know what I'm saying? So that you can come up with 
I wasn't happy anymore in the relationship because the way we started out, you know, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but you know what it was. So just make sure that you are prepared for that question. The next one is, um, do you have kids? Can you answer the question there? Um, then, um, are you traveling with your kids and other things? You know, you saw that basic question. Then do you think the age difference, that's, this one is for partners who, like, let's say you are 30 years old and your partner is 56, 60, 70 something. So <laughs> this one, they will ask you, do you think the age difference won't be a problem? You have to pre, you know, they were looking at you. I mean, you not, when you say, no, it will be a problem. No, that, they don't just take that. You have to be able to convince them why the age difference. So you give good responses to those kind of questions. And you might not even go through all of these things I've said. Yours might just be three, four questions. Some people, just four questions. It's just four questions, but it could take them 20, 50, and 30 minutes to answer those four questions because they kept on talking and talking and talking and saying things they're not supposed to say. Just keep your answers short, except when they request for more things. Then you can say more things. You know what I'm saying? Don't overdo anything. So those are some of the questions I was quizzed and some of the ones I was able to listen to. I could have been able to listen to a lot, but because they haven't called me yet, so i was just preparing my mind for my own time you know what i'm saying like when you get there it's a different ball game mentality you can't feel too confident when you get there you will see some you see fear you see people some people were like so confident when you get to the front of those consular officers your confidence will calm down when they hit you with two questions see you with pipe low you understand so i'm not saying be afraid i'm just saying don't feel too confident don't make sure you keep your answer short and sweet you know what I'm saying? Short and sweet and precise. And, you know, don't be, don't panic. And then, um, let me just tell you this. When you get to the consular office, when they collect all your document and go to verify a lot of things, to some, some people, the percentage already is already 90. The questioning part is just, uh, is just um, freestyle. They've already made up their mind that they're going to give you a visa to some of, to some of you. So, when you're asking the question, like they just want to see one or two things and then that's all. But some people, they are not convinced with what they got and what they are saying. So that's why their questions become so much more than other people. So that's what it is. And thank you guys. God bless you. Please subscribe to my channel. Please click the like button. Please leave a comment below. Please share. Please, yeah, please. I need all the subscribes and like subscription as much as as much as, as, as possible. I really need to push this video, push this um, channel. Please, guys, I'm counting on you guys. And I'm so happy that you guys keep following me and keep giving the thumbs up and keep um, encouraging me. I'm so grateful to have you guys. Have a peaceful week. I love you guys more. See you with me again. Bye.